morning. We're excited to worship with you today at Fredericksburg UMC. We'd love to get to know you. Please fill out our connection card on the online worship page. Now let's check out some announcements. fall pounding is today. Bags and supplies will be sorted in Cobbler Hall following the 1115 service and delivered to Heritage Park this afternoon. Bags will also be delivered to our Micah neighbors later in the week. Please bring your bag of hygiene items to the church following worship this morning and you can help sort these gifts for our neighbors. You could also make a donation online for food gift cards. Thank you to everyone that has pledged for 2022. If you didn't get a chance to turn in your pledge card last week, you can find the card and letter concerning pledging at our Give page or set it up online through Simple Church or pick up a card in the Narthex or Gathering Space. We will have family worship service at the 945 service next Sunday to kick off the Advent season. This will be a time to worship together as a family, strengthen your faith, and share all the good in the coming time of hope, joy, peace, and love. There will be no children or youth Sunday school, but nursery will be available. Here are some ways you can lean into the Advent season and do all the good. The, our angel tree, which supports prison fellowship program, is up in the gathering space. There will be an online option to donate gift cards. Today we also have the Guatemalan artisan sale by Alter Natives in the gathering space until 1.15 p.m. Then you don't want to miss the kickoff to a joyful Christmas season on Saturday, December 4th with games and s'mores and a photo booth on the green prior to the Christmas parade. Plus, come support our youth as they fundraise and sell concessions. So grab your seat for the parade and a treat. Online communion will be part of today's worship service. Now let's ready our hearts and minds for worship.
Church, let us join together now in our call to worship. Lord, we come to this place with thanksgiving. We will give thanks with our whole heart. We come to praise and bless your holy name. For the Lord is gracious, merciful, and abounding in steadfast love, and his love endures forever. Amen. Church, let us join together now in singing our first hymn, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. If you have a United Methodist hymnal, it can be found on page 694. Let us sing. Children's Ministries here at Fredericksburg United Methodist Church, and I'll be giving you your Sunday children's message right now. Now, as you can see, I'm in the sanctuary, and I'm going to be talking about something very special in a second, the Ark of the Covenant. But first, I want to talk to you about what it means to be excited about something. Now, imagine that you were told that you were going to Disney World. Would you be really excited? Probably so, right? Now, imagine that you were told that you were going to get a new puppy. Would you be even more excited about that? Oh, I would be very excited. Now, imagine that your parents told you that you could eat nothing but pizza and ice cream for the rest of your life. And all of those things you were told on the same day, would you be so, so happy and so excited? What would you do? Would you wanna dance and sing and jump up, or up and down and laugh and maybe play some music? I probably would, I'd be so, so happy. Now, I'd be so grateful and I'd feel very blessed that all of those things were happening to me all at once. Now, today's lesson is all about how important it is to be grateful and how we can show our thankfulness. We have a heart after God when we show our gratefulness. Now, King David had a lot of things to be grateful for. So we remember David from the David and Goliath story, but he was made king and he decided that the Ark of the Covenant should be brought to Jerusalem. Now here's a model of the Ark. 
And the ark contained the Ten Commandments, and it also had other special things in it, and it was a um, representation of God. So wherever the ark was, the presence of God was. So of course it was very special, and King David wanted it for his own in Jerusalem. King David loved God, and he wanted to be close to him. So he was celebrating with all his might in the streets when the ark was returned to the city of Jerusalem. He was dancing and singing, and there was music. Now Saul's daughter thought that King David shouldn't be dancing and singing in the streets. She was kind of embarrassed for him. But he didn't care. He was dancing and singing anyways because he was so, so grateful, and he knew that God was with him and that God was blessing him. Now we have so much to be grateful for. It's Thanksgiving week, and so we should never ever hide our gratefulness, especially during this important holiday. So this Thanksgiving, I want you to dance and sing for all the blessings that God has given us. Have a wonderful holiday. Amen. Church, as we continue to worship this morning with a time of prayer, there are members of our community that we want to lift up today. We are in prayer for uh, Brenda Goodpasture, who is at rehab. We also pray for others with health concerns, such as Doug Holbrook, Glenna Lee, Betty Drew, Ken Davis, Carl Williams Jr., Brian Brandt, Martha and Gordon Linkus, Destiny Danville, Peggy Brewster, and Steve Hoover, Wayne Hedge, Stephen Dellinger, Libby Wassum, Bob Lewandowski, and Smokey Reed. For those that we've named aloud and the others that we lift up to God silently on our hearts, let us pray. Most holy God, we give you thanks this morning for the opportunity to gather with one another online, whether we are in living rooms or at kitchen tables, perhaps we're listening to worship as we walk through our neighborhoods or, or drive to work or see family. Wherever we find ourselves today, we thank you that we are connected as your body of Christ and community, and we are just so gracious. God, we know that there are those in our community that joy comes easy today those that are able to spend time with family members and loved ones, those that are preparing to spend a week on a holiday break, to hear some good news related to work or school, those that see maybe a little bit more clearly than normal what this next season will look like in their lives. God, for all of this, we just say thank you. And God, we also know that there are those in our community with heavy hearts, those that are grieving the loss of family members, those that find themselves in the midst of waiting and uncertainty, unsure about what news they may receive from physicians or employers, those that as we move into this holiday season find that they do so with, with some heaviness. And Lord, we also know that there are those in the church where this Sunday may feel like a regular, ordinary Sunday. Wherever we may find ourselves today, God, help us all to feel the presence of your Spirit, to know that we are not alone, that you are with us. And that in the midst of uh, mourning and grief or, or happiness, that we are able to bear the fruit of your joy. Lord, we also pray for all of our sisters and brothers whose lives are affected by situations and circumstances beyond their control, those that are having their lives turned upside down from natural disaster, from systems of violence and oppression, God, we pray for their safety. We pray that they may experience moments of peace and rest during this turmoil. And we pray for all of those that go to lend a hand to provide assistance to meet their needs. God, we also uh, give you thanks today as we celebrate the fall pounding for the, the gifts that will be going out to our neighbors over the week. Those hygiene products and all of those items that will help meet some, some basic needs 
and maybe bring a smile to a family's face this holiday season. We thank you for all of those that have taken the time, have heard the call, and have said, you know what, we can make a difference and bring in some items for these fall pounding kits. May your blessing continue to be upon those kits, that they may be a source of your love and a sign of your hope to those that receive them. And God, we pray for the many leaders of this community, of this nation, and of this world, knowing that there are just so many people that are in their charge. May those leaders be granted wisdom, God, to lead the people that they serve. For all of those, Lord, that we've named aloud and the others that we lift up to you on our hearts, we give you thanks that you hear all our prayer. We pray this in the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people said, Amen. As we continue to worship with our tithes and offerings, let us reflect on our musical offertory. Let us pray. Most gracious and generous God, we thank you for all of the gifts that we have received and for an opportunity today to return some of these gifts to you. Use these tithes and these offerings to further uh, building your kingdom here and around the world, sharing your love with all who come to know your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray this as we give thanks that all may be able to join together in giving you thanks as well. We pray this in the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen. Today's scripture reading will be from 2 Samuel 6, verses 1 through 5. David again brought together all the able young men of Israel, 30,000. He and all his men went to Baala, in Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim on the ark. 
they set the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Benadab, sorry, the sons of Abinadab were guiding the new cart with the ark of God on it, and Ahio was walking in front of it. David and all of Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, sistrums, cymbals. Second Samuel 6, verses 12 through 19. Now King David was told, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he had sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. While he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sounds of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from her window. As she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women. And all the people went to their homes. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for how your word speaks to us today. Open our hearts and our minds so that you may place in us a new insight and gain a deeper knowledge of you. In your son's most holy name we pray. Amen. Today is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday before we journey into Advent. Together, we're going to take a journey today into gratitude. In our scripture reading, we find King David dancing like nobody's watching, except for 30,000 of his troops, his closest friends, his loyal subjects, and his wife. David puts on a winning touchdown end zone celebration like football has never seen. He is totally in the moment and dancing his heart out. But wait a minute, let's back up a minute. What's going on here? Which one is David, and why is the king dancing? When we first meet David... He is a shepherd boy who is inspired to take on a giant with a sling and five stones. With a single well-placed rock to the forehead, an arrogant giant named Goliath falls. David wins the battle for his people and is an instant hero. Can you imagine that moment in this boy's life? Was that a fist pump moment or was there a dignified golf clap that rippled through the troops? What kind of celebration or show of gratitude was there? Fast forward and David was anointed by God, by the prophet Samuel, to eventually become a king. He became a powerful military leader and then the unifying king of Israel. David knows that God's hand has been on him the entire time and has delivered him from some pretty tight spots. In today's scripture, it is King David who has the opportunity to retrieve the most sacred, the most holy object in his people's history, the Ark of the Covenant. To the Hebrew people, it was the only physical manifestation of God's presence on earth. The youth have made us a replica of the Ark to scale that you will see before you. In Exodus chapter 25, God has given Moses precise instructions on how the ark is to be built and moved. The ark was to be overlaid with gold and had two golden angels facing each other with their wings up. And it was from this space called the mercy seat that God spoke to his people. It was physically where God was. 
Inside the ark, among other things, were the tablets containing the Ten Commandments. When they moved through the desert, the ark went before them. The ark was so important to them that it was carried into battles. During the confrontations with the Philistines, the ark was captured. But the Philistines believed that the ark was responsible for some of their misfortunes, so they released it. The ark was moved and kept at the house of Abimadad for the next 20 years. When King David saw how the house of Abimadad had been blessed, he decided to retrieve the ark so that God could bless his nation. The ark was to be carried on the shoulders of four men using poles, but David gathered an honor guard of 30,000 men to reclaim the Ark of the Covenant from about nine miles away. When they got there, they put the ark on a new cart and they set out on their journey celebrating all the way. But soon things went terribly wrong and the mission was aborted. The reason why is another story. Our scripture for today picks up the story three months later. The ark has been moved to another location during that time, and David hears about how that household has also been blessed. Again, David is intent on bringing the ark to Jerusalem. This time, he was careful to follow the laws about transporting the ark. They were only six steps into their journey when David stops everything and offers a sacrifice of a bull and fatted calf. As they begin to move again, King David goes back to his roots as a commoner, takes off his kingly attire, and is dressed only in a linen garment that the priests wore. Almost bare, completely vulnerable before the Lord and all of his troops, he begins, as verse 14 says, dancing before the Lord with all his might. 30,000 people were shouting, singing, playing instruments, all celebrating. Just imagine the scene. The king, caught up in the moment, in pure joy, pure gratitude, pure adoration, pure love. His body could not contain the energy, and he danced with all his might. I wonder if the crowd even existed anymore for him when he was in that moment. It was just David and God, and worship. David had such a personal relationship with God and was so grateful that God had been with him throughout his life, time after time, and now he was bringing God back to be among his people. Once again, the ark was finally in the city of David, and in an act of worship, David offers burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. Continuing the celebration, David makes sure that every person, including the women, is given food, meat, bread, cakes of raisins, and dates. He offers a blessing over his people in the name of God, and he is ready to go home. It has been beyond a spectacular day. God is with them but not everybody is happy. Mikkel, his wife, has watched his entry into Jerusalem, and verse 16 picks up the story and says, Mikkel, daughter of Saul, watched from a window, and when she saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. She despised him. Mikkel, being raised by royalty with royal protocols, is upset by his display. And in later verses, she tells him what she thinks. David has just had an exhilarating experience. He has done it. He has finally brought back God into his city for himself and for his people. And now, in dramatic contrast, this harsh reaction of disapproval from a wife regarding his undignified, disgraceful, mortifying behavior, most unbecoming to a king. David knows that Mikkel has no frame of reference to understand his behavior. He says to Mikkel that he was not born into royalty like she was. All he has, his promotion, his kingship, everything is because of God's favor. 
he tells her that he will show his gratitude and will worship God in whatever way he feels moved to. He lets her know that her bitterness will not steal his joy. So what relevance does a dancing king, a disapproving wife, a crowd, and an ark have for us in 2021? We've been through a lot in this past 18 months. People are thinking deeply about the world and their place in it. It has changed how we do things and maybe shifted our focus, particularly when the churches shut down. It might even seem difficult to see where God is in all of this. But we have to remember that every person of influence in the Bible has gone through some tough times. This sorting and shifting has caused many of us to reprioritize and seek out and cling to our ark and our spiritual connection with God. Where do we find ourselves in the story? Do we find ourselves in the crowd with like-minded people? Or do we identify with David? David recognized that he needed to retrieve that centering force, that personal relationship with God, and he made a concerted effort to go after it twice. And when he did, he found such joy and peace and strength in that connection. David's worship that day, though highly public, was highly personal. David's worship was an expression of who he is. It was genuine, freely given, and without regard for what others were thinking. Or as identifying with Mikkel, the judgmental, disapproving observer where we find ourselves, blocked from receiving the joy of God's presence. Today's passage is about pursuing our centering relationship with God and gratitude. Resentment is the opposite of gratitude, and despising is resentment in the extreme. Practicing gratitude is an intentional process that goes beyond an attitude or a laundry list of things that we're thankful for. Our bodies, our brains, and our souls thrive when we experience gratitude. Gratitude gives us energy, a new vitality, enthusiasm. It's proven biology that practicing gratitude strengthens our immune system, improves our relationships, makes us more creative, improves our memory, helps us sleep better, and even helps us lose a little weight. Spiritually, gratitude is like a doorway that goes deeper into God's grace. The actual practice of gratitude is multifaceted. In gratitude, we recognize the gift, the giver, their effort, their desire to benefit us in some way, and their generosity. When we recognize all of these aspects of the gift, then we can fully receive it. And when we receive the gift, it honors the giver. It is that honoring peace that enhances our relationships. David checked all the boxes and provides our example. David recognized that God, the creator of the universe, had chosen to show his love for him time after time, gift after gift. He recognized that all he has, all of his promotion, God's hand of protection, was given to him by God, who wasn't obligated to do anything for him at all. David recognizes that he was given gifts that weren't earned. He recognized that his favor was given to him intentionally by a God who loved him, who had his well-being in mind. And joyfully, David received these gifts. David knows that God loves him, and he loved God. And God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believeth in him shall not perish, but shall receive eternal life. This is the same God who loved the world so much that he gave his only beloved son for each of us. The gift that he wants us to have, 
The gift of eternal life was bought at a price of his son. His son would suffer and die to take on all of our sin debt so that we can live redeemed and forgiven. We have intentionally been given an indescribable gift out of incredible love, a gift that not one of us deserves, but a gift that is meant for our well-being. This gift from a God who doesn't want us weighed down or sidetracked by resentment or bitterness or unforgiveness. As New Covenant Christ followers, we don't have to cross a desert to find God. Our New Testament ark is the empty cross. We are continually in the presence of Almighty God. There is no space between us unless we create it. We are right here, right now, in the presence of Almighty God. He is always waiting for us and is as close as the gift of our next breath. He invites us to go on that journey within ourselves to lay all that comes between him and us at the foot of the cross so that we can fully receive his gifts. When you let go of those things, God's liberating grace is able to make all things new. When is the last time you experienced that down-to-the-bone, full-body joy in the Lord? God wants an authentic relationship with us, whether our worship is exuberant, composed, or solemn. It is not the how of worship. It is our why. So whether you choose to come to the altar rail and lay down those burdens or stay right where you are, I encourage you to release all of those things that get in the way of receiving the gift of Jesus Christ. Isn't the gift of salvation, eternal life, and a sin debt paid in full worth dancing about? God is all in. Where are we? So let's take the first step. Would you join me in the prayer of confession? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the, cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, though none of us is worthy, the one who loves you so much, the one who chose to die for you so that you may re live redeemed, invites to his table all who love him, all who repent of their sins, and who seek to live in peace with one another. The gift has been given. Honor Jesus Christ by fully receiving his gift with joy and with gratitude. Amen. Church, as we continue to worship this morning by celebrating the sacrament of communion, we invite everyone that is worshiping with us during our 1115 hour to gather your elements to prepare your bread or your crackers and your juice and to have that before you. And if you're worshiping with us outside of that 1115 hour, you are more than welcome to spend this part of our service in prayer. Let us all join together and pray. Most gracious and loving God, we come to your table today naming that there are times when we have not loved others the way that you love us when we have let uh, resentment and hurt and the pains that we've experienced uh, keep us from living into your gratitude and generosity and, and joy. And we have just failed to be an obedient church. And so, God, we come to your table today asking for forgiveness. And God, we can also name that because of your son, Jesus Christ, because of his life and his death and his resurrection, you have made your love known to us. And so it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we are forgiven. And for this, we give you all glory and honor. 
Amen. Church, on that night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he was having a meal with his disciples. And at this meal, Christ took the bread. He gave thanks to God and he broke that bread and he shared it with his disciples. And he said to them, take and eat, for this is my body and it's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper was finished, Christ took the cup and again he gave thanks to God and shared that cup with his disciples. And he said to them, take and drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant and it's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these God's mighty acts in Jesus Christ, We who are gathered here offer ourselves as praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering and sacrifice for us. Most holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we may be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. All of this we do in Christ, with Christ, and through Christ, and the power of your Holy Spirit. And we give you all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Church, let us join together now in praying that prayer that Jesus taught us while he was with us on earth by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread that we share is a sharing in the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the cup that we share is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Church, It is with joy that we can name that the table is set and that the Lord's Supper is prepared. And this table, this is not my table or the table of the Methodist Church, but this is the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And there are no strangers to Christ. All who seek to be in relationship with Jesus and follow in his ways are welcome to the feast this morning. We'll invite you to break off a piece of that bread that you have or to share those crackers with one another and to name to each person that this is the body of Christ and it's broken for you. You're then welcome to share in the cup with each other, naming that this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Now, following the end of the worship service today, if you have additional elements, you are welcome to consume those, to eat them and drink them, or you can return them to the earth by taking them outside. Let us pray. God of amazing grace that calls us to gratitude, turning away from resentment, we thank you for this holy mystery that we have shared with one another. As we ready ourselves to go out into the world, help us to live into the spirit of gratitude, dancing with joy so that others may see and come to know your love as well. Amen.
brothers and sisters in Christ, consider writing a note of thanks this week, a note of gratitude. Remember the gift. Remember their generosity. Remember their intent to bless you in some way. You may write this note to God, or you may write it to someone who brought you closer to God. Whatever you do, you will experience the power of gratitude. Go in peace. Amen.